Hej! Välkommen min... Nej. Välkommen tillbaka min kanal. Today is the day. It is the mid-year book freakout tag. And I'm excited because I missed my opportunity to do this last year. And you know what? It's just not a year on booktube if you don't do this tag. So, settle down. Because we have some questions to answer. So, the first question of this tag is the best book you've read so far in 2024. And without a doubt, the best book I've read this year is Lost in Translation by Miriam Grossman. I will never not talk about this book. It is a nonfiction book that discusses the changing of our children, of our nation, and it discusses the reality of those issues that the media is hiding from everybody because they don't want you to know this because they make millions and billions of dollars off of the suffering of others. Not surprising, but still, it is a very, very good book. Even though it is nonfiction and it is truly, truly gruesome, it has very graphic depictions, it has true stories of people who Miriam Grossman has talk to as a therapist it was I could not put this book down despite all of the gore and the grossness it was so good it was so good I could not put it down and I highly recommend to everyone whether you agree with this change or disagree with this change I really do think this is a book that everybody needs to read so that you can form your opinion knowing everything especially the stuff that the media is trying to hide. Okay, our next question is the best sequel you've read so far in 2023. There was no option for this. I've only read one singular sequel in the year of 2024, and that is Eldest by Christopher Paolini. I read this on vacation in May. It took me two weeks. I'm really enjoying the Aragon series and I actually am going to plan on finishing it this year, but it is so in depth. There is so much happening at the end of these books that I have to take a break and read other stuff because it is so heavy. But I haven't read many sequels. I have. I do want to read the sequel to Vida Nostra and the sequel to The Book That Wouldn't Burn. I have a whole reading vlog planned for those. I just haven't done it yet. Though I am hoping that when I do, those will become, at least one of them, I hope, will become one of the best sequels and maybe one of the best books I've read this year. We will see. Question number three is a new release you haven't read yet but want to. And I'm looking through my list and I'm like, yes, that would work. Yes, this would work. But I want to discuss some books that are not talked about all the time. Obviously, the prequel to Powerless called Powerful by R Lauren Roberts, I would like to read, even though I know it's going to end in heartbreak. I'd also like to put A Sign of Her Own by Sarah Marsh on here. It is about a deaf student and who she is being taught by... Um, Alexander Graham Bell. This is supposedly based on a true story, inspired by true events, uh, but it's like not a actual true story. And it's basically just about um, this character named Ellen who is deaf and she's working under Alexander Graham Bell and it sounded pretty good. But I think the one I really do want to talk about is How to Build a Better Life by Suzanne Venker. Now I heard about this book in a podcast she did with Alex something um she's part of the uh young people young Americans group or whatever uh but this book is about how you know women can return to their roots why they should and how they can turn their life around from being this super duper feminist um uh, way of living that we have right now into a more traditional life. I haven't read the book, so I don't know for sure exactly what it's about. I think it's 186 pages. I'm going to get it on Kindle because I'm not going to buy a physical copy because it's 18 bucks and I'm not doing that for that small book. Um, and I don't know, it just sounds really interesting when I listen to her on the podcast talking about uh, child care and being a mom and relationships. I really liked what she had to say and how 
if you presented yourself in the podcast. I just have to see if I would like how she writes a book. And whether or not I agree with her opinions in this book is to be discovered. But this is the release I'm deciding to speak about. You know, for a long time, I was I was hell bent on trying to get young women in particular to understand that. Now I feel like we've moved beyond that almost because it's so much a part of the culture now, 20 years later, that it's almost like people don't even think about that word. They don't even think about, they don't even think of themselves as feminists, as feminists, but they've absorbed all of that messaging. Okay, I gotta be honest with y'all. The next question is the book you're most excited for that comes out at the end of this year. And I have no answer to this because I don't keep up on books anymore. I watch very minimal book content. The only time I know new releases are when they come to my library. So there is no doubt some stuff I'm going to find at my library that just came out that is going to be five stars, or at least four. Uh, but I don't know what they are yet, so I can't answer this question for y'all. So the next question is your biggest disappointment. And I am going to have to either say the sequel to The Crowns Game, which I DNF'd, or Ninth House by Lee Bardugo, which I DNF'd. Um, Kaiju number eight, volume six, I think. I read, it was just eh. There's, I really, I haven't read too much this year. Then most of the stuff I have read has been good. I'm 17 out of 50 books into my goal, in case you were wondering. Um, so I haven't truly read that much this year. And like I said, most of it has been good because I have just been DNFing the stuff that is bad. Um, so Ninth House was a really big disappointment, I would have to say, because, I mean, I really thought I was going to be a Lee Bardugo fan, but realizing when I read Ninth House, I realized that her writing style, I did not like Six of Crows. I'm sorry if that's an unpopular opinion, but I did not like Six of Crows. And the reason I didn't like Six of Crows was because of how it was written. And sadly, that is now Lee Bardugo's writing style. And I'm not a fan, so I don't think I'm going to read anything more by her. And Ninth House was definitely a disappointment. I DNF'd it 50% in and put it on my unhaul shelf because that was just so totally. Okay, so the next question is your biggest surprise. And I'm going to have to say Escape from Mr. Lemoncello's Library, the graphic novel, was a really, really, really pleasant surprise. I was putting the label on it at work and it caught my interest. So I started reading it and I read it during lunch. I finished it. It was truly so good. It was a five star. I really do want to read the rest of the series. I want to own this graphic novel because I think it is just so good. The art style is really, really, really beautiful. Um, I just think all the colors that are on the pages are so awesome, I guess that's how I would describe it. And I also really like the way the story is told. I, I want to read the book because I really loved the graphic novel. So I want to see if I love the book as much as I loved the graphic novel. And I just think that it was really good. It was a surprise because I don't, I rarely give graphic novels five star. The last one I gave a five star was Kaiju number eight, volume one. And then you have Invincible, the compendium, volume one. So I really don't give out five stars to graphic novels very often, but this was a very pleasant surprise. Okay, so the next question is new favorite author, and this is really hard to answer because I've only read like one book or a sequel to um, one book. Uh, so it's hard to say who would be a f new favorite author. If I had to make a prediction, I would admit that Christopher Paolini could possibly become a new favorite author. And when I say favorite, I just mean I will read his stuff. I don't think anybody I've read so far this year is someone I would classify as a new favorite. If I had read another book by Mark Lawrence, if I'd read another book by uh, Mariana and Sergi Diatonico, like there are possibilities that could be new favorite authors that I hope to read before the end of this year. But honestly, I haven't really read anything that I would say is a new favorite. I'd like to give Evelyn Skye's other series a try, but I hated the way she 
ended the crowns game the sequel was just so bad so she is probably not going to become a new favorite author but that's my opinion okay everyone's favorite question your newest fictional crush aragon obviously i feel like that is a I can't picture what Aragon looks like, and I don't like the uh, fan art that I've looked up for him, but I really, really like Aragon's character. He, I just, he is a very well written character, especially when you consider how old Christopher Paolini was when he wrote Aragon. And I really enjoy reading from his point of view. I've really found myself bored when I'm reading from Aragon's point of view because I find him such an interesting dimensional character. I also, obviously, I read Powerless. So Kai is fantastic. And I hate his name, but I really do like Kai as a character as well. Um, and I'm excited to see him hunt... Oh, spoilers. I'm excited for the sequel, let's just say that. Oh, and I guess we can talk about Pasha from The Crown's Game. Let's just say in the first book, Evelyn Skye knew how to write a love triangle and I couldn't decide who I loved more, Nikolai or Pasha, but I, cause I, love, but I love both those names too, so yeah. Noah's favorite character is going to have to be Aragon as well. Um, and I already described, I already explained why. He's just really, I mean, he is just such a great character. He reminds me of Harry from Harry Potter, and I love Harry. Um, so, yeah, he's my answer to that. A book that made me cry. You know, I don't really have an answer to this. I did tear up at I Will Always Write Back by Caitlin Alifrenerka, Liz Welsh, and Martin Ganda. I did tear up at uh, some parts, but I wasn't sobbing. A book that made you happy. Escape from Mr. Lemoncello's Library. Um, oddly enough, Lost in Translation. That was, I had really, really weird going on over there. Aragon, I enjoyed, um... A Flicker in the Dark by Stacey Willingham, I also think would make me happy because I read it with my granny and we both really enjoyed it and I predicted the ending on page 38. So I'm very happy with and proud of myself there. Favorite book to movie adaption you've seen so far this year? Haven't done any. Favorite post you've written? Don't do that. So the next question is the most beautiful book you bought this year and I will um, I will insert a video of it here. Basically, I just bought a hardcover copy of uh, The Hobbit. It is like the 71st year edition. I don't know what year. Like, And it's an anniversary edition. Um, I think it's pretty because it has pictures in it and that's the only super duper pretty book I bought this year. Don't look at my copies of Aragon because those things have been through it. What books do you really need to read by the end of this year? The sequel to Vida Nostra, which is... The sequel to Vida Nostra, and, which I can't recall the title of for right now. And also, the book that broke the world, or the book that wouldn't lie. I was there when it was the book that wouldn't lie, and now it's the book that broke the world. So, basically, these are the only two books that I really, really, really need to read before this year ends. Because these are the only two books that I care about right now, okay? I really need to read sequels. And these are the sequels to my favorite books of the past two years. I bought them when they came out full price on release day so I really do need to read them and there we go another mid-year book freak out tag has been complete finished I hope you guys enjoyed it my battery is about to die so if you have any answers to these questions on your own please tell me in the comment section and I will see you all next week for a study vlog because I'm back to studying in Swedish and I'm loving it. So, adios, au revoir, salut, hey do, and goodbye. Mwah.